Okay, so welcome to video two, how to edit a newborn skin using frequency separation. Um, please make sure you've watched video one, which shows you how to set up your frequency separation layers before you watch this one. Um, don't skip that part, that's the most important part. Um, so welcome to part two. So now we have our frequency layers um, set up, let's open the group and actually figure out how to use frequency separation. And like I said, frequency separation separates the tones and the textures. So if I make the tones invisible, we can see we just have the textures layer here that we created. If I make textures invisible, you can see we just have the tones. You zoom out enough on the tones and the image looks fine, as it did with my frequency separation text. So let's get started. Um, I'd always recommend um, starting on the tones layer, starting to correct the tones, because you may find um, with the less destructive tones correction, a lot of the textures sort themselves out or look mild enough, um, you know, to still look natural, because going for a natural look is one of the best things about frequency separation. Um, it allows you complete control over your level of editing and, um, you know, removing skin imperfections and anything that wouldn't normally be there. And when it comes to collect correcting the tones, um, there are three methods I like to use. I like to use um, the patch tool uh, with Gaussian blur. I like to use clone stamp or I like to click on here, paint and clone and lightly paint over um, with the color. So let's get started first. Um, the easiest way of correcting tones is, um, you know, areas like that are quite red or, you know, sh strong shadows that you want to minimize in the case of, say, blanket wrinkles or anything like that is to come up here um, on your spot healing brush menu and select patch tool. Now I can see there's some redness here, so I'm going to draw around the redness. And because this layer is quite blurred, I want to feather that selection. So select, modify, feather. Um, you know, the, <clears throat> the level of feather depends on how much you blur. I'd say go around half of what your Gaussian blur was. So say we went for a Gaussian blur of 13, um, we want to feather at around a 6.5 radius. And then come up to here, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and increase the blur. Um, as you'll see here, you can have, you'll have a bit of an outline, so bring that down. But you want to increase the blur so the red starts to blur away. I'm going to make textures visible so we can see what we're working on. So if I deselect and turn that on and off, you will see the redness has automatically disappeared. You can also just patch using patch tool to an area of colour you wish to replace it with, but you just need to be very careful with these hard edges here that you're, you're creating because you're on a very blurred layer. You don't want any hard edges here. The next step is to come up here um, to your clone stamp tool or hit S. Take the flow right down, I'd say maybe a 5% flow on 100% opacity. If you're unsure of the difference between flow and opacity, please watch my tutorial on flow and opacity. Um, basically, flow is the speed in which the paint comes out of the brush, so if you hold it down, it will build up. Opacity is kind of a cutoff point, so say you've got a 20% opacity, um, the, the, you know, the amount of time you have your mouse held down will just come out at 20% opacity and no more. You have to click off and on again to, um, to create another, another layer. Of opacity. So I'm on the clone stamp at a 5% flow. I'm going to sample from about here and nice and soft I'm going to start cloning over this red. Because I'm on flow I can keep my mouse held down and um, you know take it off as I wish to build up the flow. The same for these red patches here. As you can see I'm just holding down and going over them. Those of you who have the, uh, the LSP actions, the Signature Newborn set, the Parent Collection, um, well, Studio Retouch, or Forestry, you will find you already have frequency separation built in, and this has another few really cool tricks um, on there that I will show you in a moment. So let's see how that's doing. So I think we're doing quite a good job of getting rid of these red blotches, which is also already minimizing the redness of the skin. The third way I like to correct tones is to come onto the Paint and Clone layer. Hit B or go onto your brush tool. And again, you want a very low flow, maybe 5% again. And so let's tackle this redness on the eyelid. I'm going to select an area of um, skin tone that I'd like to replace it with. So say up here and make a nice small brush. And I'm simply going to start painting over. If you find the flow is too much, you can take it down even, um, even more. But remember to keep an eye on your shadows and highlights. You don't want to be painting over a shadow with lightness unless you're trying to replace the shadow itself. 
So let's change this red here. I'm just going to start colouring in. I'm going to get a bigger brush for up here and start coming in over this redness. So as you can see now, we are really starting to paint away the red areas. So let's go on to the textures and come in. Textures are areas like, um, like spots and flakes, um, scratches or anywhere like that. And the easiest way to replace the textures, uh, there are two ways of doing this in fact, but the easiest way I find is patch tool. Simply select the area you want to replace and drag it to an area you'd like to replace it with. So say these um, <clears throat> enlarged milk spots on the nose, I will replace those. Small milk spots, um, milk spots that haven't become um, large are really sweet and I would personally leave those in. So I'm simply dragging away the, um, the spots and the flakes and anywhere else I'd like to replace. So we can see here we have a bit more around the nose. I'm simply patching and dragging. Another way of doing this is going on your clone stamp, but make it hard, not soft, because the textures is a hard layer. And keep the flow down low. I'd make that maybe around 80% hardness. And you can use a clone stamp to build up. It's entirely up to you. I personally find patch tool much easier and quicker and less destructive because when you're zoomed in on a clone stamp sometimes you can think something looks really great and then you can zoom out and go ooh what did I just do? Okay and back to the tones again. Let's just figure out these last bits of tones, these last bits of redness here. So let's see how we're doing. So already we've cleaned the skin up a lot and at this point with this edit I would get on with my normal edit. I'm going to get rid of that frequency separation completely and go back to normal and I'm going to show you the uh, the LSP frequency separation action because this has a few extra bits included. <clears throat> so I'm just playing the action um, and it comes up with these instructions. Open the group, your image is split into two parts, tones and textures, which you already know. But as you can see here, we also have a dodge layer and a burn layer. Um, which are both very, very handy. Dodge means lighten and burn means darken. So you can paint on these with a white brush and lighten or darken the shadows as you wish. And here is another cool trick. You'll see here, this has gone out on the new update um, today. So if you've just purchased the newborn actions, you will have this. If you previously purchased them or any of my other actions, you will find this in your new update, which will be sent to your inbox um, because I never charge for updates. You also have um, frequency separation tone, select and fix, and frequency separation textures, select and fix. So let's say uh, we're going to go on the tone, select and fix. And what this does is the Gaussian blur trick I showed you earlier, um, but a, an awful lot less clicking for you. So you just select the area you want to fix and you hit tone, select and fix. There we go. And you can hit it more than once if you want to. And um, because you're on patch, you can patch out the way if you need to. So that's a really, really, see this redness here. That's a really, really good way of fixing the tones. And it's super, super quick. So we see all these little uh, spots here. I'm going to hold down shift and select them. And I'm going to play slow tones, select and fix. And they are gone. And again, tone, select and fix. And drag those out the way there. Anything that doesn't disappear with tone, select and fix, you can go on textures and play textures, select and fix. Sometimes what I like to do is select several areas that I want to fix. So here I'm holding down shift and the patch tool to select these areas here. I will click on tones, tone, select and fix, click on textures, textures, select and fix. And that will get rid of both, both sets on both layers. So it's rather, rather quick and a quicker way of, um, you know, of doing it really. But still use your, your clone stamp, still use your brush, you know, depending on the area you wish to fix, um, different methods will have different results. I'm going to go on textures, textures, select and fix here. So I'm simply selecting and clicking depending on whether I'm on textures or tones. So really, really kind of simple. You can just get a bit hypnotic about it and just kind of clickety click. All done. So the redness here, I'm going to go on to tone, select and fix. Oh. <laughs> click on the tones layer, Lauren. Tone, select and fix. And this will just start taking some of this redness down.
see where we were before and after. We have kept the original texture and the integrity of baby's skin, but we've removed the um, the you know the blemishes and the temporary spots and scratches. I'm going to pop this here on top, so there is our frequency separation layer. You can then flatten, and you can you know finish off your edit as you normally would, do whatever you would. But like I said, don't jump straight into the um, to the skin fixing. Um, do your normal edit first. So I'm just popping a bit of contrast there, soften the skin down a touch more, and I'm going to sharpen the lashes, and then this picture is done. So I'm sharpening the little details up again now, just to pop one final detail sharpen on there. I'm going to soften the skin a little bit more. Um, and I'm just going to play reduce the reds just to get rid of these um, these last red patches on baby that shouldn't be there. This is great for fingers and toes, um, you know, red marks, ears and things like that, that maybe because baby's a little bit warm in the studio or maybe just because, um, you know, just because. <laughs> okay. And... Um, one more, I'm just going to pop a tiny hint of brighten on and then I'm done. Okay, so that was our image before. This was with frequency separation and the rough skin edit and that is a quick finisher. And that is how to use frequency separation and how to set up your own frequency separation layers. Okay, so uh, this layer we have some blanket creases. I'm going to play frequency separation. Obviously, of course, you set up your own layers if you don't have frequency separation with the LSP, which is absolutely fine. Same difference. And on the tones layer, I'm going to select the patch tool and get rid of these blanket creases by dragging them to a smooth area. Because you will find a lot of the time blanket creases are caused by shadows. So all you want to do is drag those shadows away. And you can see here, you keep the original uh, texture of the blanket, which is really important. If you were doing this without frequency separation, you'd be either cloning or painting, and it would ruin the original texture of your blanket. So that is frequency separation to get rid of blanket creases. Okay, so that was video two, how to edit newborn skin and blanket creases in uh, Photoshop using frequency separation layers. Um, I hope that all made sense. Any questions, please feel free to join my private Facebook group. Um, search LSP Actions dash the photographer's playground. I'm always around in there. Um, and feel free to watch the next video, which is how to use frequency separation to remove um, stretch marks from a pregnant tummy. Um, I must add, <laughs> I personally always ask clients first, or I don't mention it, um, because I think stretch marks are beautiful. Um, but if your client specifically requests to remove stretch marks, it can be quite difficult to do this naturally. Um, frequency separation will be your friend there. So watch the bonus video three to learn how to use frequency separation, your newfound awesome technique to remove stretch marks.